to deteriorate, though you may not notice it uh, in the next week. Because um, it'll all be internal stuff. And so this is the period where I really have to ask you uh, to do what James and Brad did. If you've got a cold, if you've got a flu, if you've got a fever, if, you, if you're throwing up, please don't come to class. Okay? Um, so, all right. Item two. You ready? Ta-da! We chromed it. I got rid of the little fringe around the side because I thought, God, that makes me look so old. And this is making me look, I think, you know, like a sick man instead of an old man. Okay. Uh, item three, note-taking. Note-taking. Um, I haven't really said a whole lot about this yet, and we're, we're going to talk about it. Um, on March 1, we'll be talking about note-taking and memory and how note-taking can improve short-term and long-term memory. Do you guys know about the systems of online note sharing? Like Evernote? Okay. Evernote is, a, is now a Google tool and uh, you can put your notes up there and you can share them with other people. Now, you, you don't want to use a note sharing as a way of avoiding coming to class. But note sharing is actually a good idea. If you think about your future life in business, in, in not-for-profits, whatever you're going to do, if you're on, working on a project, you've got teammates and your boss is going to expect you and your teammates to collaborate. So note sharing is part of collaboration. If you want to use the Evernote site, it is available through anybody's Google account. You can put it onto your laptop as an application. Um, you can log in using your Google, uh, your, Go your Gmail address um, or other addresses. You can use Yahoo, you can use Facebook. Um, and you can share with people uh, in the class, in the world, wherever you want. Um, I, I actually encourage you to be collaborative. And I may put documents in various places and let you work on them with me. Uh, item three. Next Tuesday, I'm getting bored with this being just me. Next Tuesday, we're going to have our first uh, talk show episode. And we're going to be working on listening. So who, who's our guest for the first talk show? Who's our guest for the first talk show? I'm going to make up a lot of stuff about you. It'll all be nice. And we'll talk about that. So who, who wants to be our guest? Katie? Oh, uh, Melody, Melody. We'll have both of you. All right. Melody and Katie. And we're going to do this as part of looking at uh, the letter of listening and uh, uh, hurrier as ways to organize listening. So Katie, Melody, what we'll do is we'll, we'll, uh, we'll invite you up for the talk show. We'll have a little microphone on the desk. We'll set up a little set. You know, we'll, it'll, be like, it'll be like Letterman. I'll be a jerk, like every talk show host, and, and you'll be funny and witty. Okay? Does that work? All right. So who wants to be our announcer? We need an announcer, like Greg the, uh, uh, you, know, you know Greg on, on, the, on Ferguson, the Late Late Show? Karen, you're our announcer, so that means that you've got to, you know, do an announcer thing, like put a big, a big mohawk on your head, or something that distinguishes you as an announcer. And your job will be to introduce our guests. So, so now welcome, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so we're going to have a little fun with that, and we're working on listening. Today, as we look at our script, as uh, we look at our syllabus, we're going to need, you're going to need your textbook. We're going to look at communicating ethically. You're going to need that article about uh, effects of who asked, who paid, date, location, and gender. Um, you're going to need your second writing, and you're going to need a peer review sheet. And we will get to that somewhere. I, I don't want to just do, like, two plenary discussions. I, what I'd like to do is do a, one plenary discussion, review writing, have one more discussion. Okay, so which one? Which would you like to start with? Communicating ethically or the article about, uh, about the effects of sex?
sex, the effects on sex of who asked who paid who. Mike, I'm asking you. Sex, sex or ethics? Sex. Sex, thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you for being reliable. Yeah. All right, everybody get out that, that article. You got, get your copy of that article. If you don't have that article with you, be in a place where you can look over someone's shoulder and, and that'll help you. Look at this. Ah, oh, they're so they're so helpful to one another. I like that. Helpful people. Yeah, where where'd that corner go? It's Stephen uh, Stephen and Brandon. Ah, well, I can see Stephen later. I'll I'll give him. All right, uh, very front, very front. Let's let's look at parts of the article here. You see the stuff in, in italics, right? You know what to call that. That is the abstract. In social science articles, and in most articles these days, there is an abstract of the article. Value of the abstract? Well, what's its value to you as a reader? Overview. Yeah, it's a, you're describing what it is, but what's its value to you? Right, and if you and if it's something that doesn't interest you, has nothing to do with you, and you haven't been asked to read, and you read the abstract, and it, and you find those things out, what do you do? You skip it, right? I mean, this is a this is in a journal that has um, one, two, three, four, five, six articles that come quarterly, but they're all like this. Am I going to read every one? No. Nah. But I am going to look at probably at most abstracts to see if it has anything to do with my research. Because I want to keep up with what's interesting to me. Okay. So as you read this abstract, what's this article about? Katie, what's this article about? Um, like if a man or woman asks to take you on the date and then where you went. Yeah. What about if the man or the woman asks? Are you mean... What do you mean by that? Like, asked to go to dinner. Yeah. Does it, does this one, does this article, is this article about some kind of gender equality? Or? No. No, okay. All right. Let's go from there. It's, it's about who, it's about who's going to ask, okay? Man or woman. Yeah. What else? Their sexual expectation. Their sexual, what do you mean, sexual expectation? Whether they think, like, depending on who asks who paid date location and gender about the first date, that um, the effect that has on the men thinking what's going to happen after. Bobby? That's what the article is, is. Is Melody right here? <laughs> that's, that's what the article is about, right? Sure. That's part of what the article is about. Okay. Is Melody right here that... Melody seemed to imply by her tone of voice that if a guy asks pays, a guy expects sex. Is Melody right? No. Not always. But a lot of the time you're saying. According to the article. Well, what about according to you? According to Melody? I'm, right. <laughs> no. I don't think so. Okay, so that has not been your experience. Guys will ask, take you out, bring you home, and be gentlemen. Sometimes. <laughs> ah. Okay, we'll come to how often later guys fail to be gentlemen. All right, take a look then on the, the very first part, very first few paragraphs, up to just page 340. What the heck are they doing there? What, Cece, what the heck are they doing on page, from the opening through page 340? Do you make any sense of that? Yeah, they're describing their theory and um, previous research and what that has shown and how they're going to see how the new research compares to... Uh, oh, you made a lot of sense of that. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> excellent. They're, they're going to compare their theory to previous research. Why the heck would you do that? Caitlin, why the heck would you do that? See if it has changed. 
What else do you do you know about these kinds of articles? What are the, do you know what these are called? These kinds of articles? Okay. They're a very important, it's a very important title for you to, to learn. I know it gets talked about in 101. We'll talk about it again. These are peer-reviewed articles. So your, your professors may ask you along the way, bring me research. Gentlemen, Brandon, good to see you. Bring me research from peer-reviewed articles. That's this kind of an article. You can usually tell it because, oh man, that just barely fits. I'm not right. Um, the, you, you'll usually be able to see it because they'll have, they'll do their own review of literature and then they'll ask you to, to evaluate. They'll, they'll, they'll essentially say, Here's our theory, here's their theory, how do they fit together, okay? So what are the theories that they talk about, beginning on 341? And they've got them all, it's really very nice because they've got them all in their own subheadings. They've got them all in their own subheadings. Brad, 341 subheadings. What are they? Just run through them for us. Okay, what were we talking about on Tuesday? <coughs> how scripts. So you see how this fits in right where we are. Okay, lots of kinds of scripts. Um, sexual scripts. Se sexual scripts. Uh, Caden, Mr. Uh, oh, let's see, who, who can we? Bumpy sexual scripts. What are some sexual scripts? What are some sexual scripts? Somebody pick this up. Sexual scripts. Mike, sexual scripts. There's a sexual script. On your honeymoon, you should have, you should have great sex. That's that's a sexual script. This should be this should be like uh, this night of wild passion and and love and it's newfound and oh oh it's just and it should be glorious. What's the problem with that sexual script? That in fact is a sexual script. An excellent one, Melody. What's the problem with that sexual script? Why not, Dujon? It may be too much of an expectation for the other, the male individual. Right. It may be too much expectation. What do most couples do before they go back to the hotel room? Drink. They're, drink. They drink. <laughs> drink. It lowers inhibitions, but it also lowers the man's ability. Or it depends on the, the male individual. Particularly if they drink a lot. Go ahead, Dujon. Or it also depends on the male individual because certain foods can... Um, be stimulative and be some can be yeah. suppressive. Yeah. And what about the woman? What, what has this young woman been doing since the middle of the afternoon? What have been on her feet? She's tired. Yeah. She's tired. What's she been wearing? Heels. And what does that do to your feet? <laughs> Kills them, right? You lady, you women are smart. Uh, none of you wear heels. <laughs> you know, when uh, Anna Lisnick, do you do any of you remember Anna Lisnick? Anna was an exchange student, so now he shows up. <laughs> Anna was an exchange student two years ago. Anna would come to class in these high, high, tottery heels. No. Why? Why? Because Stephen would love to look. No. Uh, all right. Yeah. So that, that's, that's a sexual script. There are all kinds of sexual scripts. Cultural scripts. What are some cultural scripts about sexuality that you can easily identify? 
Megan? Maybe, um, like, everybody's from a different culture. Maybe it depends, like, you know, how they get their sexuality, like, from a culture. It just depends where a couple of cultures are from, I think so. Okay. One of the most common cultural scripts for women, particularly white women, young, who are raised in either an evangelical church or a, a church that is surrounded by evangelical churches, what is common cultural script about sexuality? Wait. Wait. Thank you. Thank you. Wait. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. So that's a script. And when the young man becomes too aggressive, too amorous, you must hmm? resist. Resist. So there is this kind of there is this kind of, of virginal warrior script. It's not it's not enough just to wait. You know, if you just wait, nobody asks you out. Yeah. Intrapsychic scripts <laughs> include individual desires, motives, and action that create and sustain sexual arousal. Um, interpersonal scripts act as the link between an individual attitude and societal norms. Okay, and then and then that goes on to the theory, a couple of theories about sexual expectation and some studies that have been done, including where the date occurred. And over on page 344, at the top of 344, the scripts are really interesting things because we can, with very little effort, we can identify those. But over on page 334, it gives us what these researchers are looking for. It gives us what these researchers are looking for. So what are they looking for? What are they looking for? How do we know? 344. James, you've got, you got a copy, right? What are these researchers looking for and how do we know? Anybody? Want to help James out on this one? What are the researchers looking for, and how do we know that this is what they're looking for? This is what you say the term looking for. What are they, what are they trying to study? They listed their three hypotheses. They list hypotheses. When you read this kind of literature, what you're, one of the things to always look for is something that has an H on it or an R on it. Those are two, can be RQ. Those are two really important pieces. H, those are the hypotheses. And the R is result. R is research or research question. Research question is going to be more general than the hypotheses. So what do these folks think they were going to find? Main and interaction effects exist for who asked, who paid, and where the date took place on sexual expectation, rape myth acceptance, adversarial sexual belief, and ambivalent sexism, overall hostile and benevolent. What? What? What does that mean? Emily, translate that to English, please. Well, it's pretty much saying, like, just based on the general description of the date, like who asked, who paid, and like where it was at, yeah. is like how that person interprets the sexual activity of the date. And so like if a guy asks and a guy pays, they're saying that they feel like the woman owes them, so they're going to give them sex. So, so that we should find some effect yeah. on if the guy asks and the guy paid, and, and, and it goes, and they go to a hotel room that the guy is going to there's an effect on his expectation of whether or not they'll have sex okay all right and and if the guy asked but didn't pay and they went to the movies 
Is that going to be higher or lower expectation? Lower. lower. That's, that would be our hypothesis. Okay. They went to church. He's not getting any. No, no. He's not, <laughs> he's not getting any. Now. <laughs> what? No, no, no. Church is a very sexy place, but it's got to be under the right context. Believe me, it's got to be under the right context. Sex is, is one of the most powerful, you know, you're, you have two drives in your life that are equally powerful. Food and sex. And if you satisfy food, what does that leave you? There you go. All right, but there are some there are some parts of this now. We got sexual expectation. What is rape myth acceptance? What is the what is the rape myth? I have no idea. This what is the rape myth? I'm gonna shoot at this. Um, <laughs> Don't shoot it. Go ahead. It's between one or two things. Um, go ahead. If and if, a, if the woman declines, uh, the, the male counterpart may become aggressive, tends to rape, or if the incident actually does occur, she tends to accept it and not like report her. Like, okay. Okay, you're heading in the right direction. They do discuss it. They do discuss it. Ashley, did you get anything about rape myth from the article? Well, what is the myth about rape? Colton, what is the myth about rape? Yeah, well, that's not a myth. That's a fact. It's more likely for men to rape women. That woman. The woman asked for it. That's the myth about rape. What are ways that women ask for it? By wearing skimpy clothes and by actions saying yes. by doing by. What are some other things you might do that say that you might by actually? <laughs> you, you were saying, Ashley? So wait, no, 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 no. Okay. Action. What action? Kissing. Engage. Making out in the back seat of the car. Going to the guy's house. Going to the guy's house. Right. Don't. Getting a fancy yeah. dinner. There's no point in coming. If she does any of those things. <laughs> She's I'm asking saying, for it. Ain't no big point of coming over. I know. Three in the morning for no reason. Going three in the morning for no reason. All of that implies she's asking for it. That's the rape myth. That's the rape myth. At three in the morning, Brendan, can you decide whether or not to turn on the television? Yeah, but it's at three sleep? in the morning, can you decide whether or not to start your car? Huh? At three in the morning, can you decide, make a valid decision whether or not to start your car? Yeah. Okay. At three in the morning, can you decide whether or not to look at pornography? <laughs> can you make? Uh, can you make that decision? Like, are you still okay at three in the morning? Are you still rational at three in the morning? No, of course you're rational at 3 in the morning. No, Caitlin, are you still rational at 3 in the morning? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you, your yes can still be yes, your no can still be no. There you go. Doesn't matter. And, and you may even have, he or she may even have thought about it earlier in the evening, but you can still say no, even at 3 in the morning. All right, but that's the rape myth. Uh, adversarial sexual beliefs. I'm not sure what, I, I, I'd have to go back and look again. Ambivalent sexism, we need to talk about that a little bit. Overall hostile and benevolent. Overall ambivalent sexism, what is sexism? What is sexism? Belief in superiority by one sex over another. Belief in superiority of one gender over another, okay. What is hostile sexism? <laughs> Aggressive belief in superiority. What does that mean? It, uh, of the, I don't know if the female impedes on a, on a particular like circumstance which the guy feels that he should only be capable of. Exactly. Capable. Okay. Women will impede you. Women will get in the way. Women will. Women are trying to take men's jobs. 
women are not willing to be women. They want to be men. Women are not content to be baby bearers. Right? That's hostile sexism. What is benevolent sexism? Mike, Michael, tell me about your girlfriend. What? You don't have one. Mike, we got to work this thing out. Handsomest guy, handsomest guy on campus doesn't have a girl. Ah. Oh. What she? What? What would she be like? Let's talk about the hypothetical. The one we're going to find you. The one we're going to find you. What would she be like? <laughs> She's going, to, she's going to be good looking, right? Yeah. She's going to be, of course, she's going to be good looking. Because a handsome guy like you, got to have a good looking girl. Got it. Okay. She's going to be big. I mean, there are good looking big women. Yes, there is. Queen Latifah. <laughs> They're good looking big women. Yeah. Right? Your girl going to be good, big? Or she going to be, she going to be small? Medium. 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 Oh man, this guy's this guy is so <laughs> Thank you, Michael. All right. So the rest of you now, let's help Michael out. Is his is this girl we're gonna find him? Is she a delicate flower? You you would hope so. You would hope so. Brandon, thank you so much. I'm so glad to have you in the front row today. <laughs> you would hope that she would be a delicate flower. But Bobby says, uh uh. Uh -uh. So guys, help him out. Which is she going to be? Delicate flower, warrior woman. A warrior flower. Oh, okay. Is he going to protect her? Is he going to protect her? What's he protecting her from, Terry? Like what? Okay, so from physical hazard. Physical hazard. <coughs> what else? What else might she he protect her from? Other men, male competition. Male competition. Okay. What else might he protect her from, Megan? Um, negative things around her. Negative things around her, like somebody is talking about her. Right. He's going to protect her from that. Brad, would you do that for your girl? Okay. <laughs> That is benevolent sexism. That is benevolent sexism. That somehow it is a man's role to protect a woman from slander to her reputation, from physical harm, from, from uh, uh, danger. Um, that is benevolent sexism. Now there is some, there, in sexism, it's not that like sexism has no truth to it, but there is some reason for men to protect women. Why? What's a good biological reason for men to protect women? Men are stronger. And, and what are women? Women are smaller. Men are bigger, women are smaller. That's a good biological reason. What's another good biological reason to protect women, gentlemen? They, oh, Bobby, you are so... You're on it today. Because <laughs> women have babies. Without women, what happens to the human race? Yeah. It's over. That's it. We're done. We're done. <laughs> okay? So that biological urge to protect is there. But it becomes a cultural urge to protect. Does it work the other way? No. Well, actually. Melody, do you protect your guys? Do you? Yeah, like my like my brother, I'll protect him. Okay. Do you protect the these in front of you here? The, I don't know them. You don't know them? You should get to know them. You should get to know them. They're kind of helpless. My mother-in-law, I'm going to leave this one behind here. This is also benevolent sexism. My mother-in-law says, guys are just little boys in big pants. Um, well, 
We never stop being little boys as far as she's concerned. That's benevolent sexism. And we have to be protected from ourselves. Okay. Hypothesis two. Men hold significantly higher sexual expectations, rape myth acceptance beliefs, adversarial sexual beliefs, ambivalent sexism overall, and ambivalent sexism hostile than women. Do we need to translate that? I mean, we went through the first part, and that should be fairly clear. Hypothesis three, men initiate significantly more first dates than women. Initiate? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Men, 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 more men ask out women than women ask out men. That's true. That's true? Is it okay, Shelby, is it okay for you to ask for a date? Well, I'm not asking you if you have. I'm asking you about the hypothesis. Hypothetical. Have you seen? Have Have you seen the the? Um, you know, you've seen those orange juice commercials where it's like all these bad things are going to happen. It's a good thing I had my orange juice. There's one now that's in a restaurant <laughs> yeah. where the guy is going. The the guy's going and and there's this blonde. A uh, forty-year-old blonde who goes, "Oh, at eleven, I'll call you crying because you didn't update your Facebook status." After one day, uh huh. And then at the very end, it's me and me. You'll have me. So, shall we say, if you if you as a woman initiate, you tend to come off as needy, kind of cloying. Okay, that's a cultural script. That's a cultural script. Okay, uh, so the, how did they go about studying it? That's, that's uh, the next section called Methods. <clears throat> and of it, we're not going to look at a whole lot except for the very first paragraph. Researchers visited various introductory communication courses, same course you're taking, at a large South Southwestern University, enrollment courses, Participants were instructed they could participate in extra credit, in-class extra credit opportunity. Students who did not wish to participate could still earn extra credit if they read a library article. Um, yada, 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 yada. Okay? And they talk about what they used. It's called instruments. And they used some standard tests that are on the market. You, when you're doing this kind of work, you buy this survey and administer it, so it costs you a little bit of money. And then on page 346, sample. All demographic and descriptive data in this section were collected after participants were exposed to the manipulations and subsequent dependent variables. 454 surveys were collected with 442 being usable for analysis. 251 were men, 191 were women. Ages range from 18 to 49, with the average age being 22.08 and a standard deviation of 4.72. And it can, goes on more about the demographics. So what's the population and what's the sample? These are two really important terms whenever you get involved in this kind of research. Whenever you're trying to evaluate it, what's the population? What's the sample? And what's the generalization? So let's take a look. What's the population here? Who was it that they looked at in the big picture? Um, basically, they had to um, pick a, um, a sample size. or a sample No, that's the sample, but okay. what's the population? What's the biggest part? College, college students, but specifically in the communication college course. students in an intro to communication course. Where? 
large southwestern U. Are they the same as you are? Are they just like you? Large southwestern university students in this course, are they the, just like you? No. Are they going to be similar? In many ways. In many ways. Now, what's the sample? Of this, of this group, they had 454. They don't tell us the total population number, but they have 454 students. How did those students get involved? Did somebody go to them and say, um, I want, Cece, I want you, Brenna, I want you. They were, they were offered extra credit so that they volunteered, or we'll call that self-selected. Okay. And we can go on about the sample and, and, and subdivide the, the population, or the sample population, into gender and age and all the rest. Do you see a problem with this? Do you see a problem with this? If you're questioning if it's generalized or not. Well, we haven't gotten to how far they generalize. But do you see any problem with this sample and population? Not the broadest selection of people. Why not? Because all people like they're interested in one group that it's a bunch of college students. It's a bunch of college students that are interested in one thing, right? And and they're interested in probably since they end up with 450 of them, they're probably interested in getting general education credit. Nothing wrong with that. Something we expect people to do, but that means that they may not be interested in, in what they're doing with this sexual expectation survey. Although I think that the topic will, would lock people in, and, and, because we want to know, is that old, are those old scripts still alive? Now we have to see how they generalize. Now they, they talk about their experiments, their scales, their sample. And then down on 347, they talk about results. They talk about results. 